No, the title of my YouTube video is not clickbait. Here's a photograph of me in hospital just a few short months ago after suffering a massive heart attack and cardiac arrest. In fact, the only reason why I am still here is because of the amazing efforts of the St. John Ambulance crew who came out and rescued me from my home and because of the efforts of the medical staff at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. Throughout this video, I'm gonna share with you my experience, the symptoms that I felt in the lead up to my heart attack in an effort to maybe help someone one day. But this video is not all gonna be doom and gloom. I want you to join me as my mates and I take you on a journey across the 130 kilometer long Cape to Cape. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and I'll take you all back to the beginning. Let's go. First of all, check out my quick intro reel to see some highlights from the other adventures I've been getting up to. And if you are interested in any of the content you see here, please like and subscribe because it will go a long way to helping me grow my channel. I've almost reached my first thousand subscribers, so if you help me reach that mark, I will be very grateful. Our journey began at the southern end of the Cape to Cape near the Lewin Lighthouse in Augusta. Yeah, let's go. This is a little piece of Western Australian history sat right here at the start of the Cape Lewin end of the Cape to Cape. This is called the Cape Lewin water wheel, sometimes referred to as the petrified water wheel. And from 1895 through to about 1937, it used to provide fresh water to the men working in the Cape Lewin lighthouse. And then around 1937, it was replaced by a windmill. Pretty cool little piece of history though. After a short walk along the beach, we found the logbook and signed in our names. To start things off, we were able to walk along some pretty compact gravel base and check out the views. I know, right? Don't I follow you on Instagram? It didn't take us too long to put the Lewin Lighthouse far behind us. After walking several kilometres we took a break before hitting our first section of beach. <laughs> the wind was blowing quite hard on day one whipping up the sand but we didn't let that dampen our spirits and before we knew it we were heading into our first campsite the deep denny or deep dean campsite depending on how you want to pronounce it is nestled back behind the sand dunes in a depression at the foot of a cliff face. We did find this campsite to be well sheltered, calm and relaxing. As you would have seen by now, we've had an absolutely epic first day and now we're finishing it off by coming back down to the beach from the campsite to check out a sunset. On the morning of day two, we found the wind had died off, the air was cool, and we had an opportunity to walk along some beautiful coastline to start off our day. Absolutely stunning morning out here on the Cape to Cape. Have a look at this. 
what a view. So at the start of the video, I told you all that I was going to explain to you what happened when I had my heart attack and I was gonna talk about the symptoms that I experienced. And I'm doing this because I'm hoping that maybe somewhere out there, someone will watch this video and maybe one day it will help to save their lives. So I was home on a Saturday morning. It was just like a regular day for me. I was just chilling out around the house and my wife had gone to the shops. About 11 a.m. I started to experience pains in my back. The muscles in my back were starting to cramp up and I didn't think too much of it at that point. I just thought I was having a muscle spasm. Then my chest started to cramp up about five minutes later and I thought, wow, what's going on here? I might have to go see a physio or a chiropractor, something like that. And then about five minutes after that, I had intense throbbing pains in my left and my right arms. So it was at that point I knew I was in trouble. I could feel pins and needles in my fingertips as well. So I grabbed my phone, I rang triple zero and an ambulance crew came out. They took about 10 minutes to get there. So I was about 20 minutes into my heart attack at this stage. They did a quick assessment. They confirmed what I suspected and they said, all right, we've got to get you to hospital. They threw me in the ambulance and off we went. In the interest of not drawing out this story in one big monologue, I will share bits of it throughout this video, or if you like, you can check the timestamps down below to skip ahead. After covering good ground to kick off our day, it was time to squeeze in a little bit of geocaching. Doing a little bit of geocaching while we're out here. Yeah, I'll let you look at your prizes. I don't want to be in place. It's a stunning view. Oh, well. For a place to hide a cache. Just be great to leave marks in the trail for which way you go. You're going to let me take a photo of that sucker. He's been looking all morning. He's, uh, he can't slow his head in the body, boy. Yeah, he'll move if you get too far. Yeah, it's a tiger. Ooh. He woke up, I think he was napping. <laughs> you will come across snakes and other reptiles throughout this hike, so just mind your step, and as long as you respect their space, you shouldn't have too many issues. Oh, I want to go for a swim. I told you to go back down on the beach. That looks incredible. We have made it to Hamlin Bay. <laughs> and just over there is the kiosk. I'm looking forward to this. We just made it in time. It closes between 10 and 10.30 apparently, so keep that in mind if you're planning on having a morning break at Hamlin Bay. <laughs> Had a fantastic break at the Hamlin Bay kiosk. Had pies and sausage rolls and lollies. It was fantastic. About another 20 k's to go for this day. So, all right, let's get to it. Hamelin Bay seems like a fantastic place to holiday with your family, with beautiful beaches and opportunities to observe stingrays up close to the water's edge.
I spoke about gratitude at the start of the video and this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm out here with the boys having an absolutely spectacular hike and look at this beach. It is absolutely stunning. That beautiful turquoise water, islands off in the background. You couldn't ask for any more. This is absolutely beautiful. What an amazing section of the hike. A little bit of work, not saying it's not, but the views are the payoff. It's absolutely spectacular. After covering roughly seven to eight kilometers of beach, it was time to head over the sand dunes and into the forest. Check it out, we've made it to the Boyron Up Forest. I've been hanging out for this all day and it looks absolutely stunning. I've got to do full send <laughs> into the forest. This is awesome. Oh, sweet shade. Been walking along the beach all morning and we finally made it into the trees. Yes, so excited to be here. This is awesome. The Bowran Up Forest was absolutely beautiful and our last location to hike through before camp. We are at the Point Road campground. We covered about 30 kilometers today. So our day started out with about a nine kilometer hike into Hamlin Bay. And we stopped at the kiosk for a break, which you all saw. That was so needed. <laughs> Absolutely love going there. And then we did about an eight kilometer section of beach before heading over the dunes and into the forest, which was stunning. And uh, we've got to this campground and this is a great campground. There's like brand new toilets up there. There's a water tank, it costs $15 for the night, but it is a really great campsite. Only one thing I wanna point out though, for any of you that suffer from anaphylactic shock from bees, there are tons of bees at this campground. They're all looking for the water. So just keep that in mind if you're heading out this way. Day three began with a short hike out to Contos Cliffs and Beach. And I can tell you right now, the views did not disappoint. What an absolutely fantastic start to the third day. It's places like this on the Cape to Cape that make you just want to stop and take it all in. Awesome. Should have stayed here last night. <laughs> Throughout this video you will notice some rocky sections that required some scrambling to get over them. This was the only one with a chain to assist in the climbing effort. Bit of a steep section. Nestled in amongst the sand dunes, we found a small forest and bridge that helped us negotiate a stream. It was a huge relief to see Narrabup and Preveli where we stopped for lunch. Back on the beach, boys. 
You. I ain't been looking forward to it. <laughs> How beautiful is this? We stopped in Preveley, we had a feed. That was absolutely fantastic. We crossed over the Margaret River mouth and we are now walking along this stunning beach. I don't want to get the sun in the shot too much, but look at this stunning backdrop here. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit more of my story. After the paramedics got me to hospital, they raced me up to the OR. The doctors quickly did an assessment and they were able to identify where the blockage was. I had a 99% blockage of my left coronary artery. So they went in and they put a stent in my heart. I was awake for the procedure. It was quick, it was painless. And then they wheeled me into recovery. So once I was in recovery, because my heart had gone through so much shock over the course of the last hour, and it was tired and kind of like exhausted, I ended up going into a full cardiac arrest. I didn't even know it had happened. I was talking to the nurse one second. For me, it was like I blinked and then I opened my eyes and I was surrounded by 10 other doctors and nurses and I was taken back by it and I even asked them, where did you all come from? And then they told me I just had a cardiac arrest. So my heart came to a complete stop. Technically I died and I was out for about a minute apparently. So the nurse quickly started to do CPR and then they used the defib to shock my heart back. The first shock they gave me with the defib started to make my heart beat again but it had an irregular heartbeat and the defibrillator told them to stand by and that it was analyzing because I had an irregular heartbeat and then essentially once it detected the right rhythm it gave me another shock and it uh, put my heart back into the correct rhythm. How amazing is that? That just blows my mind that we have technology like that these, these days. And it's because of the amazing medical staff at Sir Charlie Gardner Hospital and because of the efforts of St. John Ambulance crew. I am still alive and still here today. So I'm very grateful to all of them. We've made it to the Ellensbrook campground. Knocked another 30 k's on the head today. This spot looks pretty nice. Just put my pack down. Gonna sit in the shade for a little bit. Have a rest and enjoy this beautiful scenery. Some nice forest around here. Well, that's day three done. We've covered 78 kilometers so far, so we are over halfway and uh, boys have set up camp we're just having some food and then we're going to get some sleep and hit the trails again tomorrow for day four to kick off day four we passed the ellens brook house and made our way back to the coastline our next stop was going to be gracetown At the start of day four here, absolutely fantastic weather. Look at this, stunning view. We just stopped at Gracetown and had a feed. It was a great little pit stop. Now we're pushing on to Moses Rock. And yeah, it's just absolutely stunning out here. Beautiful, beautiful weather. Beautiful scenery along the coast this morning and looking forward to this afternoon. Beautiful, look at this, what a beach. Eventually we found ourselves at the William Brook Sea Cliffs, a popular spot for abseiling and rock climbing. Shame that 
classic old railway bridge on the bridge that burns down. Some of you might be wondering how painful was my heart attack. It just felt like someone had punched me in the sternum and I had like this crushing pain, persistent pain for an hour. Beautiful. It's awesome. After checking out the sea cliffs, it was approximately five kilometers to the Moses Rock campground where we were going to set up for the night. We have made it to the Moses Rock campground, set up my tent. Boys are doing the same in this little paperbark forest here which is kind of cool and we've set some stuff up on the table there to have a little bit of a feed but I've got something really cool I want to show you check this out get a little buddy this is a southern brown bandicoot <laughs> just foraging at the moment not hurting anyone and not at all intimidated by me which is fantastic because I can get nice and close and just enjoy it's really cool so we have completed four days on trail now we've done about 97 kilometers and we've got about 33 to go so we're gonna knock that on the head tomorrow to complete out the 130 kilometer long Cape to Cape it has been Absolutely spectacular, I've loved every minute of it and we're gonna pass by some pretty spectacular locations tomorrow. So yeah, looking forward to it. I'll see you then. Early start this morning, this is day five. We've got 33 kilometers left to go. So we're heading out nice and early to beat the heat and just enjoy the walk. The sun is starting to come up now. We got about half an hour of walking in before the sun started to show up. So we've probably done about 2K since we left camp, which is a great start to the day. And look at that beautiful sunrise. It's super fresh, super cool and crisp right now. It was a great idea to get going a little bit earlier today. Morning, Skippy. <laughs> there is just Stunning light all around right now. Absolutely beautiful, look at that sunrise. Sun's up now, it's over the hill. Getting into my camera shots, that's no good. <laughs> beautiful section of beach though, look at that. What is going on? What a spectacular view. Look at that water, beautiful. Oh, steps are a bit rickety. We thought we'd take a quick break out here on this viewing platform and uh, Colin spotted a pot of dolphins about half a kilometer out to see. Cam's got my drone doing some drone work for me. <laughs> He's a lot better at it than I am. Awesome. Great spot, they're just out that way. Between the months of March and April, the West Australian salmon can be found forming large schools close to shore. This is what the dolphins were chasing, and if you look carefully, you might even see some baby dolphins swimming with the pod. After observing the pod for around 10 minutes, it was time to bring the drone back and press on. Our next stop and a must-see location on the Cape to Cape was the Injured Up Natural Spa. This is the beautiful natural spa down here in the southwest. Very popular spot for tourists. You can come have a 
swim in this little rock pool and sometimes waves come crashing over through the rocks there. It creates a bit of a waterfall. While I took the drone for a spin, the boys decided to take a plunge and cool off. As the swell pushes through the rocks, water ultimately flows over and into the rock pool, giving the spa its natural bubbles. Bit of a tunnel of trees to go through here. Oh. Just heading through to Canal Rocks right now. There we go. That is the beautiful Canal Rocks down there and I'm going to use this opportunity to tell you the last part of my story. So you might be wondering what caused my heart attack. Well at first the doctors didn't know. They said that my cholesterol was fine at 1.7 and my blood pressure and my heart rate, everything showed that I was fit and healthy. And they just put it down to it being like a freak incident. They said it can happen sometimes. And then the story was pretty much the same at my six week checkup. And then a couple of weeks ago, I had my four month checkup. And that was when the doctors found a bit of extra information. Apparently several years ago, I had a blood test done. My cholesterol was a bit high at about 5.5. And he, um, he said, you know, that wouldn't have been too great a concern for your GP. They probably just told you to uh, monitor your diet, which you must have done because then every blood uh, check that you've had done after that, everything was normal and in the clear. So, yeah, um, that was probably what caused it. A slight uh, spike in my cholesterol a few years ago, and I might have had a fatty lump in my heart that... Um, burst and cause the blockage so yeah these things can happen and that's just something for you to maybe uh, check up on uh, as you go through life Water is just crystal clear. Beautiful beach. This is Smith's Beach. Getting very close to yelling up now where we'll be stopping for lunch. We've made it to yelling up. This is yelling up beach. Beautiful spot, beautiful spot. Just had a fantastic lunch break in yelling up and now we're hitting the trail again. Let's go. Back up into the hills we go. Well, we have made it to the Mount Duckworth campsite. You can see there's quite a few tents around here. We're gonna finish the last 10 Ks or so this afternoon and that'll be the end of the Cape to Cape adventure for us. So yeah, looking forward to it and uh, let's get cracking. What an absolutely incredible hike this has been. I'm absolutely loving it. I can see Sugarloaf Rock over there, which is where I started this video out. I'm almost back to where we filmed my intro. So we're cracking on and uh, yeah, just loving every minute of it. Look at that reef down there. It looks beautiful. I'd love to go snorkeling there. And in case you were wondering, the Cape to Cape track is marked by these white triangular shaped markers. We just finished crossing the last beach section of this entire journey. It's uh, nice to put that behind us, but they've all been beautiful and it's been a great walk. 
<laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Sugarloaf rock in the background. That was where I filmed my intro video. All right, boys. We are about a kilometer from the end of finishing this thing. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Cam? What do you reckon? Epic hike, hard hike. Stoked to get it done though, and uh, it's a group of boys to do it with. Yeah, Jack, your Mate, thoughts? Mate, bloody happy to be here and couldn't have done it with any better company. Colin, you did the Bibbulmun track last year, thousand kilometers. How, how does this compare? For a week, I'm not gonna follow young blokes around anymore. <laughs> you did awesome, mate. Great track, mate. He absolutely crushed it. He, he's been an absolute beast. Kept up with us the whole way. It's been he's been he's been really good. All right, yeah. So we're gonna head up to the lighthouse now. There's the lighthouse. I just thought I'd let you all know. What does this all mean for me going forward? Well, I'm not gonna let it deter me. I'm gonna keep doing the things I love doing. I've come out here on this amazing adventure with my friends, and it's just been a really great time I've enjoyed every minute of it some of it was challenging I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna lie about that you know it's some boggy sandy beach sections but the beaches were beautiful and I loved every single minute of it every single day it was fantastic so yeah I'm just gonna keep having adventures keep making content because I love doing that and I uh, hope you all enjoy it all right we've made it we have finished the Cape to Cape it was an absolutely awesome time I talked about gratitude at the start of the video and throughout this video and I just want to extend a huge thank you to these guys for inviting me along. It was an absolutely awesome time so thank you so much guys. Our pleasure mate. Thanks for having time, me. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, I just want to yeah, encourage everyone to get out there, enjoy life, have a great time and I'll see you all on my next adventure. Subscribe! <laughs> thank you. <laughs>